Hi guys, today I want to show you how you can use Azure for something like gaming. Now, you've probably heard of a service like Stadia, which basically allows you to rent a gaming PC in the cloud. Now, with that gaming PC, basically what you do is you install your games on the PC and then the results are rendered on the PC in the cloud and then they're streamed back to you over the internet and then you just basically are watching a video on your local machine. So you don't have to have a high-end GPU, you just need something that can decode video, which most computers can do nowadays. And then you interact with that game using a keyboard and a mouse. So long if you're willing to deal with a little bit of latency on that game, it's usually not a bad gaming experience. In fact, it can be pretty comparable to what you might find if you were even doing it on a local setup, depending on the game that you're using. Now, if you don't wanna pay for a subscription like Stadia, you're kinda of like me, you don't game a lot, you game occasionally, using something like Azure might be something that might be more economical. Now, VMs on Azure with GPUs can be expensive if you leave them on all the time, but if you're just using it for gaming periodically, what you can do on Azure is you can basically set one up, use spot instances, and then you can then get a VM, use it for however you game, however long you game for, which might be an hour or two, you only get billed for the time that you use it, then you shut the VM down and you're not paying for that VM while you're not using it. You basically just pay for the storage of the disk, depending on the size of that, it can just be a few dollars a month versus a couple of dozens of dollars if you're using something like Stadia. So I'm just gonna show you how you can set this up. I'm gonna be using Steam to do the streaming because it has a built-in feature for that. And then I'm going to set it up on Azure, and then I'm going to stream the results back to my local PC and play a game locally. It's actually pretty easy to do, so I'll provide the links to all the downloads in this particular video description. You can download those, and then once you uh, set this up, you can use it for your games on Azure as well. So to start, I'm gonna show you how to set the VM up. It's pretty straightforward using the Azure portal. So I'm gonna create a resource and then click on Virtual Machine. Now, I'm going to just create a new resource group Let's call it AZ Gaming or something like that. It can be whatever you want to name your resource group. And then I can you know, name the VM whatever, Blaze Gaming or something like that. Then you'll want to choose a region that's somewhat near you to minimize latency. So if I use East US or East US 2, either one of those should be fine. Um, you want to choose no infrastructure redundancy required here. Uh, that's so that you can get some of the in GPU enabled VMs. And the security type, it should be standard. Now the image can be any version of Windows, but I'm going to be using Windows 11 Pro here. Now, if you want to get some of the older generation of VMs, you'll have to use Windows 10, but the process for this is still the same. You can get a Windows 10 Pro for uh, Gen 1 VMs. So once you have that selected, you want to come down here and then choose run with Azure Spot discount. That basically uses Spot instances. What Spot instances are, are extra virtual machines that exist in an Azure data center that are going underutilized. So basically to encourage people to utilize those, they give big discounts on those virtual machines. And as long as they're available, you can use them for gaming. So you can uh, click on this box right here and then it will allow you to select those virtual machines that are available at that particular time. So it might depend on what region you choose, uh, if there's any available capacity for GPU enabled VMs. If the demand increases for those particular VMs, then you might get booted from your VM. That's what this allocation policy here is. You just want to choose, make sure you have an eviction policy of stop deallocate, which means that you can use the VM, but if somebody comes along that wants to actually use it for reserve capacity, you might get kicked out. That's the main thing that you want to worry about here. So these are going for about uh, 25 cents an hour right now, and that price fluctuates depending on the demand for these VMs. Now to choose the size, you can click on see all sizes right here. And uh, this is gonna show you uh, all the VMs available, but we're gonna add a filter right here. And we're gonna ch choose type and then select GPU and deselect general purpose. And that's gonna give us a list of virtual machines here. These are unsupported, so we can't use these because they're generation one VMs. But if you're using the Windows 10 generation one image, you could definitely use these. These have an older v, uh, GPU in them, which uh, might be better for some older games, but they tend to be more expensive though. Some of these newer VMs are uh, the ones that you might wanna consider. Now, most of these right here, if you choose like the uh, NC series, this has got a, these have decent GPUs in them. Uh, the ND series, uh, the NV uh, 4AS has, um, has a Radeon GPU in it. And so it's not one that I would choose, but the other sizes down here, this NC4 uh, T4 has a pretty decent GPU in it as well. But the NC series 
and these ND series and then this uh, NCAS T4 are probably ones that are going to work well enough for, for gaming purposes. Now, you just want to choose one that's got enough CPU horsepower, which the baseline for most of these is probably going to be enough for most folks here. And so depending on which one you choose, depending on how many cores you get and how much RAM you get, they're all, they're all are obviously loaded up with a, quite a bit of RAM because these are generally used for machine learning and those kinds of things. But you can definitely use them for gaming because it's going to have enough RAM to run most games that you would encounter today. So I'm going to choose one that has uh, maybe this NC6 V3 right here and uh, just select this one and uh, select select it. And it's got an NVIDIA GPU in it. And the uh, username, the username is just so you can log on to the machine and uh, you want to put in a username and password that meets the uh, criterion. Now you need to have inbound port rules for this. So I'm going to change this on the networking tab and then you can confirm this if you have a Windows 10 or 11 license. If you don't have access to this, you can use Windows uh, Server and it'll work fine too. So if you don't have access to these, I have these uh, Windows 10, 11 licensing here that I can use for this. So um, the, the disk, you can use uh, a different kind of disk depending on what you're willing to pay for for storage. Now, you probably don't have to have premium SSDs or, or SSDs at all. You can use the standard uh, HDDs and be just fine. For, for gaming, you don't really need a high performance disk. You just basically need uh, something that's going to store your games. It might take a little bit longer to install software and load games, but if that's not a problem for you, you can choose this and save a buck or two on storage. But if you want fast loading games, get one of these other SSD options. Now under networking, you can choose this um, networking right here. It's gonna create um, a virtual network for you on Azure and it's going to assign the, the various things you need for that to work. But you want to uh, choose some inbound ports here. Now it's, it gives you the ability to use uh, selected ports here. We're gonna go with um, the, the basic here. You can go with an advanced one right here and we're going to configure two ports on this. We're going to configure 3389 and uh, we're also going to uh, enable a new inbound port for VNC, which we will need for this. So let's um, get a port for that. Let's choose a destination port of 45900 and choose TCP and then um, priority uh, 1010 is fine and allow this. This is uh, useful for uh, allowing in VNC into this VM because we're going to use VNC because VNC will use a frame capture from the actual hardware versus uh, using something like R RDP, which basically won't let you launch the games if you're using RDP session. So we'll have to install T uh, VNC once we get this machine created. So with those two ports up, we can uh, have everything we need for this and you can click OK and then you can go to management. I just like to have the boot diagnostics turned on. Other than that, uh, the rest of the stuff can uh, stay as is. Though it's under the monitoring tab. And then the rest of this is just pretty much vanilla. And I'm going to click create and let it create my virtual machine, which I'm going to be paying as a current pricing, about 25 cents an hour. Okay, so my VM is up. Now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to connect to it. I'm just going to uh, use RDP right here. You can download the RDP file or you can just get the IP address either way. Uh, this is just going to make it a little bit easier. So click on this file and it's going to say connect to this machine and uh, put in the username and password you supplied when you created the VM. And this will then uh, launch the RDP session into the VM. Now this is going to take a minute to load up. So let's let it go through all the um, different kinds of ceremony. It needs to get everything set up for the profile for the first login. So we have a bone stock virtual machine here. Now this is easy to find the de device um, manager here. If I launch that, you can see that I have a display controller that needs installing and there is no audio device uh, currently other than the remote audio. So I need to have a local audio device for uh, sound for gaming. I'm gonna show you how to set that up and then I'm gonna, we're gonna get the NVIDIA drivers, which both of these are really easy to do. So just use uh, the browser here, uh, we can launch Edge. Um, if you want to install Chrome, you can do that or another browser. I'm just using uh, Edge because it's the one that comes with it and it's the one that I'm going to uh, be using for this. So to get NVIDIA drivers, that's pretty simple. You know, just go to NVIDIA's website and download them. So just, uh, no, no, wrong, wrong link here. Uh, NVIDIA's official site and then um, drivers. That's what I'm looking for. And so we're going to go for 
data center at Tesla. And I think we have a P100 in this, uh, the particular, particular VM. Um, it doesn't really matter uh, as long as you get the right driver. Um, and we're using Windows 11 uh, and any of those will work. So search for this. And um, as of right now, I think the latest version of this is 528. Uh, don't get the gaming drivers because it won't work. You need to get the data center drivers for this particular um, virtual machine to work well. And so download that, and then that will download the uh, drivers for your machine. And it should download pretty fast since we're in an Azure data center, which uh, has a fat pipe. And then you can just install those like you would any other video driver. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that, but we'll come back when that's done. Okay, that's installed. Let's get our sound driver. To, to do this, we basically just need to Google virtual sound card. Um, and this will bring you to this website here, which is from E2ESoft. And you can download this little um, virtual sound card. It's basically just a capture device that you can use for doing different kinds of things. Uh, and you can download this uh, little utility. And um, this will download this to your local machine. It's just a little uh, like two megabyte download. And um, depending on how busy the internet is, and this will just basically give you some kind of driver that will allow the capture software uh, to capture a sound uh, file that it can then be used to uh, stream back to your local context. So let's install this. And it's pretty straightforward with this uh, uh, particular installation. And you can launch this. And it's just going to launch the control panel for that. But you can close it. So now we should have a device uh, setting, device manager here, that shows both an audio uh, output and um, uh, sound rather, uh, E2, um, E2E soft uh, virtual audio right there. And now we should have a display adapter. So while we're, while we're right here, uh, there's a couple things that we need to do with this. Um, we need to first disable Hyper-V video and we need to disable the remote display adapter, but we're not gonna do it through RDP, because if we do that, we're gonna basically shoot ourselves in the foot. So we need to install tight VNC. And this is why, uh, why I enabled um, the port 5900 is so that I could install tight VNC uh, as part of this download. So to install this, you just download tight VNC and run the installer for this. And um, it's basically uh, just another remote desktop type software if you've never used VNC before and um, not as secure, but you know, it does, it does the trick um, for our purposes. If someone was to hack this particular machine, I'm not going to cry too much because it's not something that needs to be particularly secure. But now that that's running, I can test the uh, connection. Now that that's installed, I can launch my local uh, my, my local copy of type VNC. And then I'm just going to put this IP up here in here in to my local uh, VNC. So 232.193.251 and then connect. And um, this should connect me to that virtual machine. Now I'm getting a password prompt here, putting the same password that I gave it when I installed VNC. And then um, now this is the screen. Now, if I log on the uh, to type VNC, it's gonna boot me off of RDP because it's basically taking over the session. And so I'm, I'm disconnected from uh, VNC, uh, but now I'm connected by way, uh, I'm disconnected from RDP, but connected by way of VNC. And so it's defaulting to this uh, setting right here, which is uh, 1080, 1024 by 768, but you can change the resolution. Now I'm gonna change the resolution to something that's more um, conducive for gaming. So a wider screen, like a 16 by nine uh, type resolution. And so you can choose that from here. Um, yeah, 1920 by 1080, uh, that's a 1080p. Um, and, and that way it's going to be the native, the so-called native resolution for what I'm going to be doing here. Now, once you have that changed, the, um, the resolution should be useful, used for games as well. It will try to detect what's available to this machine. You can also use another resolution if that works better for your monitor. So let's just use this one. It's fine too. And, um, if for some reason you can't change the resolution of the display once you've logged into tight VNC, there is a way to fix that. Uh, the first thing you need to do is launch a browser and type in custom resolution utility. And you're gonna see this link right here that says for custom res resolution utility for monitor test. 
And uh, this is basically just a little utility that allows you to add uh, custom settings into the list of, of supported uh, resolutions for your machine. So once you've downloaded that, extract the fold files into a folder. I called mine CRU on the desktop. And then you run this uh, application right here called Crew. Now, this uh, basically allows you to add in resolutions that aren't in the list. So if you come down here to standard resolutions, click on add and choose one that's going to be suitable for your gaming experience. So a 16 by nine is typical, what, what typically what most games, modern games use. Older games might use a four by three. So you could use like uh, 1280 by 800, which is a 16 by 10, which is fine for 16 by nine games or 1280 by 720 or one of these other ones from the list you could use uh, 1080p right here if you want to do that or you go with 1600 by 900 just you know, pick one it doesn't really matter i'm going to go with this one right here or something like that and then click ok and then click um ok here and then that's going to add it into the list then you run this little utility called restart 64 and that's going to restart the drivers and basically enable the custom resolution on your machine and then you should be able to, to um, see it reset um, now that we have the actual sound card installed and we have the GPU enabled and the driver set installed. Now I need to disable uh, some of this stuff right here. I need to disable uh, this Hyper-V uh, adapter right here. So I'm gonna uninstall this particular device right here, this Hyper-V video, cause I don't want it to use that one. And so I'm gonna uninstall it and um, I don't wanna restart my computer, no. And so it's using, it's basically forcing the rendering onto the GPU now uh, for this. And so everything is on this Tesla P100 and uh, it's got a 16 gig GPU in it. And so all the rendering is uh, being done on that. So now uh, the hardware is taken care of. I need to install Steam and get a game installed. So Steam is pretty straightforward. So just go to download Steam and install it and you'll be done with that. So if you've never installed Steam, it's pretty straightforward. Just Google Steam and uh, you can go to the Steam download page and then you can install Steam right here and just install Steam and it's going to download it and then run the installer. And once that uh, is finished, which will take a few seconds to do, uh, you'll be good to go. Okay. Log into Steam once you have it installed and uh, this will, this might run an update or validate an install. So it can take a few seconds depending on the nature of Steam at the moment. And uh, you have to put in the right password unlike me right here. And then that's going to basically uh, set up Steam. Now you notice this pop-up down here, this toaster uh, reminder that shows me that I have another machine connected. Now I need to install some games. Um, that's pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and install some games on this. I'm just gonna use StarCraft 2. So I'm gonna go to battle.net and get battle.net installed on this thing. And then um, install uh, Diablo 2, not Diablo, StarCraft 2 on this thing and then play that. Once your games are installed, I have StarCraft 2 installed now. Um, you can add them to Steam. Now, it doesn't really matter which game uh, you use. You can use uh, StarCraft or any other game that's available on Steam. Now, every game is going to perform differently, so you'll have to make sure that um, you tweak with it uh, to uh, figure out what's going to work best for your game. But you can just click Add Game. You can add non-Steam games, and it'll try to detect them if you don't already have them in there. But if you uh, just want to add an executable, you can uh, browse for that executable on your file system. Now for StarCraft, it has a, uh, a little uh, quirk to it. And so you have to add the switcher application, which basically switches between battle.net client and StarCraft. And so I put that into uh, the library and then that allows me to launch StarCraft without having to use battle.net uh, to, to launch it first. So uh, I added that in and um, then you, Make sure that you have it enabled. So you wanna make sure that you have remote play enabled right here, enable remote play. Um, you should uh, see your other computer. Uh, if you have Steam running, uh, this is my local machine right here. So this is basically means the two can see each other on Steam's network. And so I should be able to use uh, my local machine to play games on this one if it shows up here. And you'll have to the, tweak the settings on this particular remote play screen here. Um, uh, because that's going to impact how the game performs. Uh, so you can do um, different kinds of things right here. Uh, you can use NV frame buffer capture on NVIDIA GPUs, which is accelerated frame buffer capture. If you uh, have NVIDIA GPUs, which I do, um, you can use hardware encoding. 
set the number of threads if you need that. And all these are gonna impact the performance of the game depending on which one it is. Um, if you need a bigger VM, you can resize it um, in the Azure portal. Just come down here to size and you can choose a different VM size, but all that um, will impact the performance of the game as well. And uh, the size of the VM, the number of GPUs you have, the, the, the nature of the game, all that's gonna impact the overall performance of the game. And then of course, your available bandwidth to play it. So you can turn those on. You can also choose uh, options for streaming. It's going to be you know, fast. That's going to be more compression artifacts and that kind of things or beautiful. It's going to have less uh, compression artifacts. Uh, it just depends on what your experience you're looking for. And once you have all that, you can click uh, OK. Now, uh, with all that installed, you can launch uh, Steam locally. And I'm going to go ahead and launch Steam on my local desktop here. And then uh, if I come over to my library, I should see the games that I have installed on my uh, remote machine here. So this is the StarCraft II Switcher, which is the one I'm gonna launch to play the game. So if it's stream, it should launch it uh, remotely. So over here, uh, if you pull up this right here, um, this is tight VNC. You can see that it's loading StarCraft now. So when it starts to load StarCraft here, you can close tight VNC to save on some bandwidth. And uh, you should be able to see it load inside of the streaming, uh, the streaming experience right here, which is from Steam. So this is going to be better performance. And um, go ahead and log into Battle.net here uh, with the right password, of course. And uh, once you're authenticated, uh, let's see. Yeah, I was on 14 minutes ago. You should be able to see the game playing, and uh, you should be able to see here the, the the sound coming through. Um, on the machine and so you can uh, probably hear it coming on the video. This is just uh, StarCraft uh, playing uh, remotely. So if I come over here to, uh, to custom, let's just do a little melee game right here to see what the gaming experience is going to be like. Well, I like this map. I'm going to use that. Um, create a lobby for this one. Um, it's a fun little map. It's basically a money map for, uh, for Carnage if you like that kind of a gaming experience. Uh, let's just add an AI in here. Add AI and click start game. And uh, this will launch the game. And uh, once the game launches, you should be able to uh, you know, play it with a fairly decent experience on uh, Azure. Uh, now, it's not, uh, of course, gonna be like playing it natively, but in any case, um, it should be good enough for most uh, games, uh, depending on what games you like. All right, now that my game is loaded, let me get some uh, SCVs here. And uh, this person let's build a few SCVs here. And uh, let's get one building something down here. And um, the uh, animation seems to be pretty smooth. Um, so again, something that you can use for gaming. Not incredibly glitzy, but it's not terrible either. Um, I think it'll work for what I'm gonna do. And you can see that I'm uh, doing uh, live gaming right here on Azure. So this is streaming results back to me. So again, uh, something that you can do on Azure if you're just wanting to build um, a little gaming rig and play games occasionally, or you can use it for um, any kind of experience that you might use otherwise on Azure. So again, check it out if you're interested in gaming and you like to game on Azure. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.